Hey everyone, so today we're going to create a typing speed test using React, and specifically the focus of this is going to be using the context for state management, and of course that means we'll be using use reducer for most of the state updates. So this video will require you to know a little bit of React and be a little bit comfortable with Redux style state management, but if you're a beginner or an intermediate, it should be easy to follow along. So I hope you guys enjoy. We'll be using Create React app for this project. You can use either npm or I'm using yarn. The project name is going to be typing test and I'll be using TypeScript with this project. And as always, I'm going to clean up the source directory so that we can have a fresh start without any distractions. I've also updated app to just say hello world. All right, the first thing I want to do is create our context. So I think I'm going to make it a new directory called state. And in that directory, we'll have a file called context.tsx. So the first thing that we're going to define is the typing context and create context comes from react. So right now in create context, we're going to hold the value of an array where the first value is an empty object and the second value is a function that returns an empty object. We'll replace this later with something more useful, but for now, this is just a placeholder so that we can use it inside of a typing provider. I'm going to type it as a function component. So we have access to children inside of props. The following JSX is how we normally do providers. Now this is red right now because we need to actually provide a value. And the value that we want is actually what comes out of use reducer because we'll be using use reducer to manage all of our state. And then finally, to make all of this useful, we're going to make a custom hook called use typing. So we grab that use reducer value from the typing provider, and then we can destructure it as state and dispatch as we would expect from a use reducer. Let's also provide the typing context. And then for now, let's just return that same state and dispatch. This return value is going to change a little later once we define our state. But with all of that, our context is ready. So inside of app, we can import typing provider and wrap our application around it so we can use that hook anywhere inside of our app. Now let's actually make a state file so we can define how our state looks like and what our data model is going to be. So I know that we want a preview text as well as the user's input. And then we're also going to add characters, which is going to be the number of correct characters that matches the preview text. And then of course, there's going to be a timer component. So we'll need to take care of seconds as well as a timer ID so that we are able to start and stop an interval. Now with that state, let's define some initial state. So these are all the empty stuff. I'm actually going to change timer ID to be optional so that we can have undefined available to us. And for the text, I'm just going to add some random preview text that we could match our typing with. And then I'm going to start adding some types that looks a little bit like Redux because we're basically building our own Redux to use the use reducer hook. And this last one is called a transducer, which in Redux terms is the root reducer. And transducer is a functional programming term that gets thrown around a lot, but it's basically a map that determines which reducer we're going to use, which just really boils down to a switch case where we check the action type and return the state based on which reducer to use. So let's start simple. We're going to create an update function for changing input. The change input is going to be of type reducer where it takes in a payload of a string and we can name the payload input just to make things a little more clear. I'm going to have a default value of an empty string just in case, but we're going to update the input value inside of state and return that state. And inside of our main reducer function or the transducer, in the case of that action type, we'll return the result of change input with the actions payload. We're going to repeat this process for timer actions. So I'm going to do a set timer and tick. Let me scroll down a bit. So for set timer, we're going to set it with a number payload, spread the state because we want to preserve everything else, and then send in the timer ID. Now, this is why the payload is optional because we want to unset the timer or restart the timer or with an undefined payload. So the timer ID becomes undefined again. And then tick is going to be pretty simple. We're just going to add one to the seconds for every second that passes. And then finally in our reducer, we'll add all of those functions. And since tick doesn't need a second argument, we can just pass it in with state and nothing else. Now back in context, we can make use of those variables, specifically initial state and reducer. And we're going to update the use reducer here with reducer and initial state. And then for added type safety, 
Let's change this to initial state and give the context of state. And this is a react.dispatch. And we're dispatching an action, our action. The action type is gonna be of any type and we need to import everything. So that should be good to go. So in theory, our context is done. So let's test some stuff out by creating some components. And I'm gonna group them all into a directory called components. And the first one is gonna be components, user inputs, and I'm also gonna make preview. So both of them, we're just gonna add this boilerplate before we get started with the actual state modifications. So the preview component is gonna be pretty simple. We're gonna return a div where we're gonna display the text and we're gonna use the use typing hook where we'll destructure text out of the state and render that. And then for our user input, we're actually gonna return a text area. This time we're gonna grab both state and dispatch and I'm gonna destructure state and grab input. And then inside of the text area, we're gonna give it the value of input. And then on change, we're gonna dispatch the change input action, where the payload is gonna be the event.target.value. Okay, and I think we're ready to start our server. Okay, let's see. Um, right, we need to render our components. So back in our app component, let's open up this typing provider and then add both preview and user input that we just created. And if we go back to our browser, there's our application. So the input text works and the change event works. And I know what you're thinking. It's a lot of work to just to change some text. But the thing is, we're going to add onto our context and our hook. So it becomes even more usable. And I think this is a good time to just add a little bit of styling. Add some CSS variables for green and red. And these two colors are light enough so that black text can work. Too late to a... And then let's just have a custom black so we're not so basic. So I'm gonna make the background color black as well as the color of most of our text. And I'll also make a container class with some spacing and I'm gonna make a display flex and also background color white. And inside of app, that container class is gonna go right here. Container. And also let's add those two colors so Green is going to be background color of the green color or the green variable that we just added. And then same goes for red, like so. Now I'm going to make use of these two colors in preview because we're going to destructure not just text, but also input. And using both text and input, I'm going to render a span for each character. I'm going to check the character if it matches the text to the character or to the user's input. This way each character will have a background color based on whether or not the user typed the correct character. And then we just add a class name like this and send in color. And since we're mapping over, we need a key and I'll just use S and the index. Now instead of returning the plain text, we'll return the preview text that we just built. So if you go back to the browser, oh, this is not looking great, bear with it. We'll start typing. So there's some green. And then there's some red. Meanwhile, all these other spans are white because we haven't touched them yet. Okay, so let's just add a little bit more styling so things look a little better. So I'm gonna group up preview and user input under a class name called typing test. I'm also gonna add another div here called typing speed where we'll add another component a little later to show the words per minute. And while we're at it, let's just add a little h1 for header that says typing speed test. And then up here, I'm gonna add element styles. And the h1, I wanna be text align center and then be white. Text area, I'm just gonna also make width of 100%. Zero padding and height auto, so then we don't have to really worry about that. And for legibility, just do 1.5 rem. All right, and I'm gonna remove the background color from the container. And instead, I'll have the background color on both typing test and typing speed. Let's give it, let's also make both of them rounded with a border radius of four pixels. And for typing test, I'm gonna do width of 66% and then typing speed will be the remaining 33% where it'll have a 0.5% margin for the remaining space. And let's just give this font size of 1.2 rem here. I think I'll also want to add a class for preview and give it the size of 1.5 rem. 
and have a little bit of bottom margin. And then the last thing is gonna be text align center on the typing speed component. So let's see, uh, is, I actually want this down here. And let's surround this with a fragment and let's check that now. All right, so this is basically it. Um, oh, I misspelled typing speed. All right, there we go. There we go. So this is basically what our app looks like. I think we need some padding, so let's add that to typing test. Let's give it 0.5 rem. There we go. Now let's go back to editing our context. So instead of returning the state and dispatch from use reducer, I want to create some custom functions here. So we don't actually send out the raw dispatch. Instead, we'll control how we dispatch actions. This way we can compose things together. So for example, when we do an on input, we'll start a timer if the timer's not already going and we'll export these composed functions. This also solves the problem where we have an asynchronous action here. We need to dispatch it inside the set interval, but we also have to store the timer ID so that we can stop the timer. And the stop timer is gonna be pretty simple. We're, we're gonna clear the interval and dispatch set timer with the undefined payload. Now back to on input, I mentioned that we wanted to start the timer and this is gonna happen when the timer ID is undefined. We also wanna stop the timer and this is gonna be whenever the user is done typing. So when the input matches the length of the text input. And of course, stop timer will only work if the timer ID exists and the timer is going. So we'll need to add that to the conditional. And I don't think there's a need to add start timer and stop timer to the export. So these are going to act as private functions for now. We're going to have to update our we're going to have to update our hook here because it's no longer being destructured like this. Instead, from state, we're getting input and then we also need on input and then we'll change on change to take e.target.value. All right. Now back to the preview. This is going to be the same thing. We'll need text and input from state, but we're not going to dispatch anything. So that's going to be the only change here. Now we can create our last component. And this one, I think I'll just call it speed info. Import react export speed info state seconds. Okay. So right now the speed info is just going to be showing the clock of seconds and the correct characters. But because this is a typing speed application, we'll need to calculate words per minute. And of course, that'll take words and minutes and divide those two. And of course, there are numbers and a good workaround of not displaying not a number is just do an or and display zero whenever we have a falsy value. Now, just for clarity, I'm going to make a function for words and minutes where we take in the characters and the seconds. And then we can have a div here that displays the words per minute. And we'll use the two fun or the three functions that we did earlier. So WPM is going to take the words and then minutes, and those both take in the characters and the seconds, respectively. And then if we add this back in our app, where typing speed used to be, and I think everything should be correct. So we have zero WTPM correct characters. So let's give this a go. Oh, that's not right. So back in our context, where is that interval? Here it is. So the problem is that we are not getting a second argument, which needs to be 1000, because otherwise this dispatch is happening every nanosecond or millisecond. I forget which one it is. Actually. So now adding the 1000, this is actually one second. So let's try this again. Uh, something's not right. So the correct characters isn't updating and words per minute isn't updating. Oh, duh. So change input needs to actually do that. You know what? I'm gonna make a utility file. And in this utility file, I'm gonna just snatch all of this, paste it in here, import WPM words minutes from dot dot slash utils. Uh, we need to export everything. I'm gonna add another function here called count correct characters, where we'll take two strings of text and inputs, 
And we're going to remove all the spaces. And then we'll return the length of all the matching characters. So in states, under input, we'll update this to say count correct characters, state.text, and state.input. There we go. So now we have correct characters coming up. I think that's it. We created a typing speed test. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you found it helpful and valuable, consider subscribing. And I'll see and I'll see you all next time.